we've been talking more on spiritual warfare, um, Robin kind of touched based on it last time. There are many different theories of when it comes to who has authority over what demonic attack, um, what kind of spiritual covering there is when it comes to spouses, um, just a lot of different variations. And there's so many different texts, so many different scriptures that lead one way or the other. Now, back in the old days, women were considered property and they were pretty much owned by their father. If they weren't married off, which was being traded for goats or farmland or whatever, and the father died, then she would be owned by her older brother. <clears throat> so in a spiritual context, what demons like to do, and just anybody, even churches these days, still use it as an excuse to have some kind of lordship over your wife. That's not what submitting is supposed to be. They want you to believe that it's still like that. That you have to have some kind of covering, some kind of figure there to pray over you, which is biblical. I mean, don't get me wrong, you should be equally yoked in a marriage. Do not shack up with an atheist, do not shack up with a witch, because it's just going to fail. Sooner or later, it's going to fail. I mean, yes, if there's some true connection there, you could try to bring them around, and that is absolutely biblical to work on that. But when you're in a situation like most people who watch these videos are, <sighs> they cannot wrap their mind around the basics, nonetheless, any kind of context the warfare or anything that U.S. survivors or people that deal with survivors deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Prayer is our main weapon. Period. And if you don't have somebody that's going to get on their knees and pray for you, that's rough. I mean, yes, you can pray for yourself, but I mean, there's power in numbers. And that's why it's always important to find somebody not only in a romantic relationship, but just in general, like I sit there, they would understand what you're going through and pray for you. Um, that being said, it is a war, and they will pull out all stops. There's demons that play legalistic games all the time. And they will get you to say, you need to be that woman, just shut up, sit in the corner of the church, and just pray with your mouth closed and not say a word. Um... Again, that's not submitting. There's like one verse that pretty much says that, but there's so many other stories throughout the Bible where God used women as a tool. You know, I, I have an unpopular belief, and I'm sure there's going to be comments on this maybe, but when they talk about the 12 apostles, me personally, I believe Mary Madeline was an apostle. She was a very close follower with Jesus. But because most of the scriptures were written by men, everything was geared towards men. It's like, you know, the feeding of the 5,000, loaves and fishes. All those numbers were men. They didn't include women and children. That's how Hebrews thought back then. Well, they took census, censuses, and they go by thousands and ten thousands. They're referring to men. They didn't look at women and children as people. But here or here, there, anyways... Back to the spiritual warfare side. Robin says it over and over and over again. The main thing that you need to do is stay in constant, constant repentance. If you do not repent, you have any sin in there, it, it, it's a doorway. It's a doorway that you constantly have open when you don't change a habit, when you don't walk away from something. The reason why we repent to keep those doors closed. When we try to work in our own strength, let's say you struggle with drugs, you struggle with porn, you struggle with sex, just any of those things that we struggle with, you know, any kind of what they call willful sin or whatever. You're holding a door by yourself. You're putting all your weight up against that door and all this just crap is just pushing against it, coming back at you. So when you constantly just fight that in your own strength, you got all that pushing back and that door is going to give every once in a while. Your door's going to open. You're going to have sleeping with your neighbor. You're going to, you know, go down some web trail that you shouldn't be going down. You know, it just... It, whatever it is. But when you truly repent 
and you walk away from an addiction, you walk away from every single aspect, every single action that leads up to that behavior. I mean, that's what true repentance is. You just turn from that behavior and go the opposite way. You have Jesus, all the angels of heaven, all that other stuff, holding that door for you. Amen. It's not your own strength. They're holding the door. You're giving it to him. And that's why that's the biggest key, even in deliverance. I mean, if somebody won't repent of sins, I won't do anything with deliverance, period. You know, you, you could try. And of course, you might be able to cast stuff out, but if they're not willing to change, there's no point. They have to have that change of heart. And the same thing goes just in, in a survivor's standpoint. And it's working with everything inside of you, you know, altars and stuff like that, and just something that you trust even if they come forward and working them getting them to repent along with your repentance. So everything's in one, in agreement. It goes back to the whole marriage thing. I'm like I said about being married to an atheist. You can't be unequally yoked in a marriage. And being unequally yoked is, again, when you're a believer, you have your convictions, you have your faith, you have your beliefs, you have the truth. And when you're carrying around somebody that just doesn't care and just want to live life to the fullest or however you want it, not that you know we can't live life to the fullest as a believer, but it's a different context. They think it's carpe diem, they think it's the whole immediate YOLO, YOLO, that's the word I was trying to Immediate gratification. Immediate yeah, gratification. It's not immediate gratification. That's all better. Satan. I mean, <laughs> it's way better than immediate gratification. It's you know, the there, there was a conversation about happiness, and it, it's not that, you know, we're supposed to be happy. Happy is a chemical feeling in our brain. When we feel emotions, it's, it's a chemical reaction in our brain, and happiness is one of them. What we want is the pure joy of the Lord. That can't be taken away, that can't be changed. That's why when people sit there and try to say, you know, it's like a happiness feeling. It's, it's happiness is temporary. You know, it's like all other emotions. I mean, depression is supposed to be temporary. I mean, it can be influenced demonically and that can be prayed for. But, I mean, it's simple things that we deal with as humans. And it goes back to another thing when it comes to <laughs> struggles. Not everything is a demon. I've said it before in blogs. I think I've said it in other videos. I mean, especially when it comes to, you know, SRA survivors with altars and stuff like that, that they're not demons, you know, and the biggest struggle is the flesh. And that's how those doorways get open because they start whispering to your flesh. They start whispering to your fleshly desires. And that's why it's important to die to yourself, basically. And dying to yourself is basically just, you know, every single thing that got you going, your flesh going in a way that wasn't right for you. Just let it go. Just let it go. And you repent from those behaviors. Again, that word, repent, that's a very important word. And just change. Just, just walk away, change, dedicate your life to the right path. And you give to Him. You know, we're called to live with open hands for a reason. You know, the Lord blesses, the Lord takes away. And it, there's nothing wrong with that. He knows what's best for us. And that's why it's important to trust in Him. With everything. There's a period of my life where I was completely in control. At least I thought I was. I had a nice house, nice car. All this other stuff. And one by one, the tighter I held on to stuff, started going away. You know, I kept getting joked at at church that I was living a life of joke. I, I literally was. Because that's not what God wanted for me. And I know there's going to be some people out there prosperity-wise, oh, no, God wants to see. No, God wants to see it in his plan. He wants to see what's right for you. We might not be able to comprehend it with our human mind. But that's what he, his plan and his will is.
is not as hard as you think. These struggles are not as hard as you think. Surround yourself with the same beliefs as you. Surround yourself with other believers. And notice I'm not saying Christians because I... <laughs> that's another topic. <laughs> that but actual not, believers in Christ. That word is not. Actual believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Right. Also, constantly just pray for what he's willing to give you. You know, I mean, if, if you're looking for a spouse... Which let him pick. Let him pick it. Yes. He does let a him really good it. job. It's it's horrible when you do it on your own will, because usually that's mostly lust driven. And the flesh dies anyways. But when you truly just seek him, you know, it's like the verse goes, seek first the kingdom of God. And all this will be given to you. And that's another way we should all walk. We seek him first. It's through him that we live. It's through him that we breathe. It's through him that we have anything. So again, I tell you, it's important to surround yourself with others that understand what you're going through. It's important to constantly be in prayer. Give those struggles up to him. Be in full repentance every day. You find yourself slip, just get right back up. Don't let condemnation seek in. Right. Because that's, that's another sin. <laughs> it's just a cycle, you know? You, you just, you get back to it. You get back on that path. Just know that he loves you. And he will do anything. Whether you understand it or not, because it would be his way, not yours. But to show that love to you. And protect you. Which he will. He will protect you. I know it's hard to understand what some of the things that some of you have gone through. But that was through free will. All that stuff was because through the curse of this world, we have free will. And he allows it to happen, unfortunately. For one reason or another. Because he didn't want to rule over us with an iron fist. He created us for his pleasure and he wants us to be, yes, follow him. But through that free will, he wanted to see us make the right choice. This is for the men on that side of it. Man the F up. I'm serious. We're called as men to love our wives as Christ loved the church. I mean sacrificially. That means you serve them, just as they serve you. It's a mutual thing. It's an agreement. And two become one flesh and walk in agreement. And what I mean by man up, get on your knees. Pray for your Amen. wife. Amen. Get them through whatever moment they're going through at that point. Quit distracting with the video games. Sit there watching TV all day. Cut that crap out. Start being a man. Start taking care of your family. And when people are struggling, you help them. Don't brush them off. It really sickens me to hear that when somebody's struggling, and the excuse is, well, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in that crap. Dude, you're set to fail. I hate to say it, but I mean, you're already set to fail. You're destined for the lake of fire. That's the truth. But man, up. There's a massive difference between women who go through this, who have a praying husband, and women who do not. Um, no, women are not slaves. It, we were never intended for that. We are to be adored. All of that is true. Everything that mankind has done in this situation, all of the changes. Were the church on the negative side wants to use that whole... Woman was not a woman is a man. Man's not a woman. Man is of God. Woman is a man, and use that as a domineering tactic. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. God didn't create woman from man to be a slave for man. God didn't create Eve to serve Adam. God created Eve as a partner, as a helper for Adam. He didn't tell Adam. 
go ahead, dominion over the world, and tell Eve, get in the kitchen. Yeah. He just told them both, go forth and multiply. Tend to my garden. The having that, that, that godly structure in the family is, is paramount. It changes everything. It changes life in general. If you don't have a spouse and you want a spouse, let God choose your spouse. Uh, he does a really good job and people even in our best tend not to. Even we're, when we're really thinking right, uh, uh, why not let the Almighty choose for you? If you have chosen, you know, just pray that they become a praying spouse <laughs> if they're not. Yeah. And, if, and if, if they are a believer, encourage that. Support them. Look at them. Pay attention to how they're doing spiritually. Always. That's any marriage. Going through SRA, which there are not more women victims than men. There are more women that come forth. But most of the people that we talk to and know about are female. So mostly what we're dealing with is do, do these women have a strong husband that is going to pray a hedge of protection over his household, his children, and yes, his wife, not as property, not as property, as a gift from God. A wife is a gift from God. And helper, like yeah, I said. A helper. It's supposed to be a helper. We're supposed to love one another. <laughs> we got to get back to the basics. And it works really well. And... In the demonic, when it comes to the demonic, you have to have that. Because if you, when you're dealing with the demonic, a bad marriage, an unequally yoked marriage causes, brings a lot of sin into your life. If you have that issue while you're going through SA or SRA, it's profoundly worse because the balance is not there. A person still can do that. They can still get past it. But if you're not equally yoked, equally yoked, that means on the inside. That doesn't mean you're the same at all. It just means that you're, you're, you're inside, your core. I will serve God no matter what. Okay, because we've all got to go in that direction. We've all got to start taking it that seriously. It's just scary times out there. And even if it wasn't, we've got to get it going and, and get it together. You know, this is the end times. It's time to leave the gummy bear games behind. It, is. it doesn't mean we can't have fun. It doesn't mean that you can't live life abundantly. Because after all, that's what he wants for us, to live life abundantly. That's yes. not planes and mansions. That is... Maybe going hiking on a mountainside, going for a drive down the beach. That's part of life abundantly. But seek Him more. Every day, seek Him. Anytime you feel lost, seek Him. Don't go looking for man for answers. Because, and I don't mean man in a sexual context, I just mean humans, period. Because we're all flawed. And we all are distorted by our own opinions. And there's only one truth. Right. Having a, having a good husband, it, it's just, it makes all the difference in the world when you're going through such a serious time of healing that we have to go through in SRA. And just in general, because a lot of people have been traumatized. There, a lot of people have been sexually abused. Um, so that there are similarities it's just very very intense for us so having a strong believing husband a bulldog in the spirit is I just I can't tell you how valuable that is I, I don't know how to measure it and I asked specifically for a specific husband and I got it I would 100% suggest getting God to choose your spouse He's, he's, what's he going to do? Give you something that's not right for you? <laughs> Might not be what you expect, but we don't know what's around the corner, and we don't know who's going to get hurt. We don't know who's gonna, how their lives are going to change. He knows all those ins and outs, and it's very important to do that because when we start going through these um, what appear to be demonic fights, and we're repenting, and, and there's no relief, and we're still being hurt, and we're going through body memories, if that spouse... <laughs> does not have a relationship with God. 
there, there's no way that they're going to understand. There, there's no capability. It's, it's no. hard. It's no. really hard for them to understand with God in their face going, hey, telling you what to do. And you end up going through this means you go step by step with God. Like, what do you want me to do now? <laughs> and you learn. You learn very, very, very quickly <laughs> with this. It's trial by fire. It definitely is. It is. It's trial by fire. Mm. And nothing can compare to what a survivor has been through. Mm. Nothing can compare to what people are still going through. And I wish God would just come and put a stop to it all, but... And do time. <clears throat> it's just not that way. Again, He gave us free will. We know it's a hard thing to grasp, but it's truth. But that's why we have to hold on to the truth. Well, we know the good difference between good and evil now. And, and we know evil, and it's, it's getting really, really bad out there. I know it's always been. The relationship and imbalance between men and women is, has always been very difficult. There was most of human history, women were held as slaves, bought and sold, and not much more value than that. And that didn't work. So we stood up for our rights, and now <laughs> the kids are raising themselves, you know. We keep fixing things wrong. And at this point, manhood is, is pretty much dead. And I'm not saying that there aren't good men. There certainly are. And I'm not saying that women are necessarily better. But manhood has got to be the first thing the enemy took down. Because if you don't have that balance where you take care of each other, with a lot of prayer, a lot of time. Everybody doesn't need to work 60 hours a week, especially not when you have children at home. Somebody needs to be praying. You need to be focused. You need to be paying attention to each other's spiritual health. What do they need? Are they not on in gear? What can I do to help them? Really love each other. You know, originally when we were talking about this video, it was supposed to be how a male is a spiritual covering for his spouse. And the more I read into it, the more I saw that yeah, we are supposed to be a protector spiritually, physically, emotionally. But my actions don't affect her salvation and vice versa. Right. She has her own spirit right. that is indwelled, as I have my own spirit. I, I can send and we, open we up. We can protect and pray for each other, yeah. but it's, it, it, it's just going a completely different direction from where last night when we were talking about it even <laughs> started. And... That's why it's important just to remember you have that relationship with Jesus. Yes, it helps to be equally yoked to have that spouse that has that relationship with Jesus. But you have that relationship. You were the one that originally repented of your sins and confessed that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. That he is alive, that he's dead, buried, risen, and sits at the right hand of the Father. So you have the authority over these demons also. You don't have to go seeking out deliverance ministers, anything like that. The biggest key is repenting from whatever behavior is going on at that point. And you slam that door shut. And he'll be right there with all his angels holding that door with you. No, I've seen it every day. Every day. Uh, I see it all the time. Repent. Whatever he needs you to do. And he might not expect someone who coming from a culture where certain sins are normal doing much he will expect of you he will meet you where you are and will he will expect more and more of you and if you see demonic if you see have demonic activity that just means that you need to check yourself you need to change something that doesn't mean you're going to come from you know growing up in a brothel to to, to acting perfect he knows you. He knows when you're being general. He knows when you're being genu generous. He knows when you're being genuine. And and he'll work with you. And that just slams doors to demons. I used to have them all over the place all the time. And they do mess with us. Like I was in the last video talking about the ringing in my ear. They do come around knocking on the doors. Um, and then I check myself and I say, okay, Lord, I'm going to start this day and I'm going to say if there's anything I need to work on, let me know. And then I, I search myself 
and I make positive changes. And, it, and the changes that I need to make are never what I think they are. They're usually I need to relax more, that kind of thing. You know, that there, there's no condemnation in Christ. Absolutely not. No condemnation in Christ. And that's why it's important to, again, repent and seek Him. Yeah, you just need to change. It's that simple. The gospel is supposed to be simple. It's man that makes it complicated. Right. Right, we turn that into slavery. Uh, we, we've turned that into all sorts of brutality. We, we've turned that into imprisoning women in marriages, abuse of marriages, severely abuses. I don't mean people making mistakes. You can't leave when you get they make a mistake, but severely abusive situations. It, it's that's not what it is. Really read the book. Really ask him. Really ask him, and really ask him for a spouse if you're looking for one. <laughs> Let him choose. <laughs>